Welcome to the special board meeting of the Board of Trustees. It is uh, Tuesday, May 17th. Uh, this meeting is being held via remote participation and is being live streamed on the AMSA web and the AMSA YouTube channel. Is that correct? Or is this Facebook? It's on Facebook, sorry. Facebook. Okay. Um, we will be adjourning. We get the beginning of the meeting. We, after public comment, we will adjourn to executive sessions. There will be a pause in the uh, live Facebook feed, and a second one will be resumed for the second for the second portion of the meeting. Uh, I'd like looking for a timekeeper for tonight to keep us on track. Our trustee Zach is was unable to attend tonight. I'll go on to you. It might be a little tougher for me today because I have only one screen, <laughs> like as usual, but I'll, I'll do my best. All right. Thank you, Raul. Uh, next up, so I have announced already that we will be going into executive session uh, after the public comment period, and we will be returning to open session after afterwards. And next up is to record the attendance and, and guests. So... Uh, Sarah, can you announce the board members who are present? Okay, if, and if I miss someone, please let me know. Uh, ben Hamill, Don Capello, Kristen Carney, Liz Saul, Mara Webster, Nick Poirier, Raul Porras, Roger Jarrett, Sheila Kelly are here. And Jill, let's see, did I get Jill? And Jill. I just joined. Yes. And Jill. Fantastic. Sorry, Zoom was updating. They wouldn't let me join until it was done updating. So we've got our guests. Liz, was there any requests for public comment? Uh, no, I just double-checked and there were none. Anybody attending the meeting wish to speak in public comment? Hearing no requests for public comment, we will next I'll need a vote to enter executive session to for contract negotiations with non-represented personnel The uh, for Ellen Lindsay, executive director, and because discussion in open session would be detrimental to the, to the uh, discussion. And I move that. Oh. Go ahead. I was going to move that we go into executive session. <laughs> I'll second that. All right. Sheila she and Ben, right? All right. Sarah, please call the roll. Okay, let me get this in here. Okay. All right. Uh, ben Hamill. Ben. Yeah. Yes, here, yep. Don Capello. Yes. Jill Schaefer. Yes. Kristen Carney. Yes. Liz Saul. Yes. Laura Webster. Yes. Nick Poirier? Yes. Raul Porras? Yes. Roger Jarrett? Yes. Sheila Kelly? Yes. That is everyone. Um, Bella has joined us too, so let oh. the record reflect that she's here. Okay. Yeah. And we will be inviting Ellen to join us in an executive session. So. Uh, with that, we will be uh, we'll be adjourning to executive session. I estimate that we should be back in ten minutes. So, see you soon. The uh, exec executive director contract for twenty twenty two twenty twenty three. I'd like to ask you to give a summary of the contract conditions. So, so um, the contract for executive director was uh, based on the previous contract. So um, it was kind of our structurally that we try to keep it similar. Um, as everybody might have heard, um, this will be a one-year contract. And so from beginning July 1st in 2022 uh, to June 30th, 2023, um, everything else as far as uh, required language about the duties and responsibilities 
evaluation process is similar as in previous years. Um, the, we did change, there were some clauses about termination that will be, not be applicable for a one year contract and what happens uh, in, you know, if we terminate it in the middle of the, for the three year term. So we, we removed that. Uh, there was also some clauses in the past about termination for costs and how the board was committing to allowing Ellen to go back to her counseling job after uh, stepping down as executive director. That has been removed since it wouldn't apply in the one year contract. Um, and um, and again, we have discussed that with Ellen and she agrees. Uh, compensation for the one year is this NLI salary of $165,000, uh, less customary taxes and withholdings. The benefits are similar to um, to uh, those extended in the past, 12 uh, sick days, uh, 20 days of vacation that will accrue throughout the year, but also allows Ellen to uh, take those days even before they have been earned. Um, which is normally what she does for, for summer vacation. So that's, um, that's in place as well. And, um, and then uh, there's a job description about the executive director role, which um, is aligned with the previous contract. That would be the high level of details of it. Great. Right. Uh, does final take a motion to approve the contract as described? Motion to approve. That's Mora. Mora? I second it. Second from Ben. Sarah, please call the roll. Hold on, hold on, man. hold on. Okay, two. Contract. Yes. Okay. Uh, Bella Gorman. Yes. Ben Hamill. Yes. Don Capello. Yes. Jill Schaefer. Yes. Kristen Carney. Yes. Liz Saul. Liz? Yes. Okay. Mara Webster? Yes. yes. Nick Poirier? Yes. Paul Porras? Yes. Roger Jarrett? Yes. And Sheila Kelly. That's everyone. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, thank you, Ellen, and congratulations. Um, just in, in case there's somebody that did not see either of the announcements. Uh, Ellen has announced that she is planning to retire as executive director at the end of the 2022-2023 school year. We wish, we thank her for all the work, amazing work that she's done. You, you can see the letter to the trust that Raul and I wrote from the trustees with more detail. But so the, the main reason on the contract is that Ellen is uh, graduating from AMSA. Um, at the end of the 2022-2023 school year, but she's not going anywhere because she still has some other work to do to, to benefit AMSA beyond her ending her role as executive director. So it is all a positive. Um, it is not, there is no negative to this reasoning behind the one-year contract. So I just want to make that very clear that it is that the reasoning behind a one-year contract. So with that, the next item is discussion on whether or not to hire an executive search firm to, to help us uh, recruit our next executive director. And I'd like to turn the meeting over to Dawn Capello at this point to lead that discussion. Hi, everyone. Um, Ellen, I just wanted to chime in. And I know I haven't worked with you uh, as long as the other board members. Um, and I know that the contract took longer to hammer out because you were thinking about your next steps. And I just want to thank you for the patience, um, everything you've afforded to AMSA. Even though I've only worked with you a short time, it's been delightful. And I'm glad we get another year of your um, historical knowledge, your leadership at AMSA. I love the tone that you set for the school. And I know that I speak for many board members when I say that. So um, thank you for everything. Um, and in true Ellen fashion, she has given us a luxury uh, in her last year as executive director by giving us uh, an extensive amount of, no of notice. So we will be able to um, conduct a very thorough, very thoughtful, a very inclusive search for our next executive director. So Ellen, thank you for leaving the school in this position being here for that year uh, and then your continued work in terms of fundraising and finishing off the campus upgrade. And, and we are so lucky to have you and we are so lucky with how you've handled uh, your decision to retire uh, and graduate as Roger says. So thank you. Um, 
going right into sort of the meat of our meeting. I don't want to keep everyone longer than we have to. Um, rather than a vote to hire a search firm, um, I probably should have given this the title of do we, you know, we should vote to agree to seek proposals, right? So there'll still be a step where we get the proposals as a board of trustee, we get the top proposals, um, and then we will decide whether we want to enter into uh, a negotiation for a contract for a search firm. So just to take a step back, um, you know, there are two ways we can go with this as a board. Uh, as a board, we could handle this ourselves. We could do everything from the job description to the final negotiations and every step in between. And, and all of us have either hired or been hired. We understand what that entails. Um, you know, reviewing resumes, posting, getting the word out, networking, uh, getting high qualified candidates in the, you know, in and vetted and whittled down to, to some really great candidates to consider as a board of trustees. So that being said, we can go two roads. Um, we can do that ourselves. It will take an enormous amount of bandwidth, um, seeing what we do now um, in our role as trustees and, and having been through this at prior schools and prior towns, it's a lot of work. Um, the con of hiring his search firm, so the pros and the cons. So the pros, uh, we would bring in someone who has the bandwidth, the expertise and the connections um, to run this, uh, to get us a, a set of candidates to consider. That's, that's a high level view of the process. Uh, the cons would be the cost. Um, and I'm sure there are other cons as well, but that's the big one. Um, rather than get into what do we think it's going to cost in this meeting, before we start receiving proposals, if we go that way, um, you know, I don't want to really get into the nitty gritty of the cost until we have them in front of us so that we're in a strong negotiating position. So that being said, I just want to open up to the board for questions. Um, just sort of, you know, tonight, I think we should decide as a board, Ellen has given us the opportunity to have a thoughtful process, but at the same time, we want to be, to hit the ground running to get the high quality candidates this fall. And that means we need to start making some decisions. So I'm happy to take questions uh, on whether we want to seek proposals for a search firm. <clears throat> Don, can you lay out like a timeline of, of like uh, finding that search firm? Sure. So in one of our previous meetings, we had created a small working group to get some work done uh, quietly until the announcement was made. It hasn't really been that long, uh, but what we did is we started to think about it so we can indeed hit the ground running. So the small working group right now is myself, Raul, Liz, Jill, Anders, and we brought in Liana uh, for her expertise in terms of the school's finances and what we might be looking at in terms of costs. Um, that group has met, we have discussed sort of the what um, a scope of services would look like for a job like this. Um, we as a small working group are ready to hit the ground running as soon as we get this board's approval if it goes that way. Um, you normally give these search firms two weeks to get you their proposals. Uh, the working group would meet, look through the proposals beforehand, then they would meet. If we get 10 proposals or 20 proposals, uh, our goal would be to vet the firms speak to their references, come up with a short list to bring back to the Board of Trustees. So at the end of the day, the decision to hire a specific search firm to enter into a contract would go through this board. Uh, but we want a small working group to kind of get through a lot of um, the details so we can be efficient with our time. Don, so, do you mind if I just pipe in for a second? Mm -hmm. uh, please. Uh, sure, so uh, I think Don laid out very nice of the pros and the cons of, of the search firm. The con being the cost and, and the pros being the amount of work that they can do and the net that they could cast for sure. Um, two other thoughts that I had. One is, and you know, Dawn has stated this many times, as has Raul and Roger, how important uh, that this process is open and transparent and um, trust is built into the process as we proceed. Um, I think in some parts of our community, hiring a firm that's far outside or far removed or way out in California or way out wherever might be viewed somewhat skeptic skeptically, just to be frank. Um, 
I also think that having a firm that has some educational knowledge or has worked with schools will be really important. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the Marlboro uh, search firm that we were very interested in, NASDAQ, was not interested in helping us for whatever reason. Um, so I think, um, you know, having a firm that has experience with education is going to be important. Having a firm that would be committed to, as Don said, a thoughtful and transparent process would be very important. I'd also throw out there, too, that um, I'm ready to work very hard on behalf of all of you um, and the board to, you know, put me in for what you need and however I can help you uh, to reduce the load on you and whatever you know, whatever decision that you make, I'm here to work very hard for all of you. Well, thank you, Andres. It would be great to have you as part of the team. Really appreciate it. One of the it. things that we talked about as a small group was um, putting out a scope of services. Um, and one of the things I didn't mention, which I think will be key to the process, to Andres' point, um, when you bring on a firm like this, you make it clear that you want to have a transparent, inclusive process, and they will hold, whether it's community forums or surveys, um, interviews with the teachers, um, they could come to a, you know, a teacher's meeting, they would probably speak, a lot of the firms, when I did some research, they would speak to board of trustee members. So really, we'll help them identify stakeholder groups, um, and they would, you know, take the time in the beginning of the process to meet with groups and to Parents, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to forget parents. I am a parent. Um, but, you know, that's another, I think, benefit, you know, rather than the board reaching out to everyone saying, hey, what's your opinion? What do you think makes a great executive director? What do we think works? What doesn't work? Um, having that outside firm do it um, gives people their non and um, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, anyway. Anonymity. Thank you. That was really great. Um, so really, I just want to go through questions. Uh, the last thing I want to touch on, was that we would look for pricing um, in a total and then also a la carte in case we end up wanting to just take advantage of certain parts of a proposal. So anyone feel free to jump in, questions, thoughts, concerns? And, and just one comment about what that means. So we definitely, I think the word thoughtful has been used multiple times. We definitely want to make sure that's in front of this process and, and transparent is the other objective I would use. So part of what that entails is to make sure that as we define criteria, meet the candidates and, and go through all of this, we're taking into account everybody's perspective from all the stakeholders in the school. So it's not, it's not just a decision from the board. The board is making the decision, but the, the decision is influenced by the perspectives of everybody in the community. So part of what we consider when we request for, for the search firms to help us is for them to conduct an organizational assessment. Now, there's a trade-off there because an organizational assessment can mean many things. It can mean a drawn-out consulting project that could take half a year, and we may not have time to do that. Uh, but if they, if they present it the right way and they do it in a way that we can fit within the timeline, and of course the cost, which is why Don's bringing up that itemized uh, kind of proposal, then we would definitely do that. But if not, you know, we have other ways of doing that. We can, we, we've been doing that ourselves internally we you know forums and making sure the community is involved and how we make up that that task force which is i guess the next item of the agenda is also a big part of that um, and to don's point we want to make sure that there are parents at least two faculty members are represented there dr lewis has already um expressed that he will be part of that so we want to make sure that your voice is heard no matter which part of the amsa community you are representing Um, Don, I had one, one question on process. Is there going to be a scoring system or how are we going to decide the uh, finalists, presuming that we uh, go the route of an executive search firm? How is this board going to go from the short list to the final? Well, no. Um, how, are we, how are we going to get to the short? I guess my question is, given all the proposals we received, how are we going to What's the process to get to the short list? Oh, sure. Um, so what I would probably do, and I'm open to other ideas, but so we've got the small working group and I, I'm, you know, happy to send out a message to them, you know, to start kind of gathering what do we think is important here? You know, whether it's, and I'm just going to throw things against the wall, 
you know, number of years in business, um, number of references for schools, charter schools, things like that. So the working group will have to sort of think about what they want to use for metrics to make a, a solid decision. Um, and that's a conversation that we'll have. Um, we didn't want to get too far down the rabbit hole just in case this board uh, wildly wants to go it alone. So, but I agree, Roger, we definitely need to, we, you know, we're going to want to use solid metrics to evaluate right. all the firms to get to a short list. Yeah, and if I could just, I'm sorry, if I could just add one really important thing too is, is not only successful placement, but how long that person served at a particular school once they were placed. Was it a one-year thing or a two-year thing? Or were, were they placed in a school for a long period of time? And did they add a tremendous amount of stability and trust to that organization? Yes, very valuable. Um, other questions for Dawn? I just, I would just like something for the record. I wrote down very quickly um, who the small working group is. I have Dawn, Raul, Jill, Anders, Bella, Liana. Is that it? Bella's not on that working group. I didn't say Ellen. Uh, da, 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 da. So myself, Liz, Raul, Jill, Anders, and Liana. Liana's more of a special guest, but we, we like to have her there. So I have Don, Raul, Don, I have you, I have Raul, I have Jill, and I have Anders and Bella. Is that right? Oh, Liz. Uh, Bella. Switch Bella for Liz. Yes. It's Liz. Okay. Got it. Sorry. I knew there was something wrong here. Okay. It's the A-team. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. Uh, I think we're ready. I'm, I think the discussion has come to a lull. I think we're ready to take a vote as to what, whether or not to uh, a vote to seek bids for search for search firms to assist us with the executive search for a new executive director. Mm -hmm. um, I'll take a motion. I'll, I'll make this motion myself since I said it. It's the wording, Sarah, the wording is exactly uh, uh, in uh, C of the votes. Okay. Off the agenda, but the vote is, the vote is to whether a positive vote would be to, to say, yes, we would seek bids from search firms to assist us with the executive search for our new executive director starting the 2023-2024 school year. All right. Um, Sarah, please call the roll. I'll I'll second. Second. I need a second. I need a second. I'll second. Roll. All seconds. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Bella Gorman? Yes. Ben Hamill? Yes. Don Capello? Yes. Jill Schaefer? Yes. Kristen Carney? Yes. Liz Saul? Yes. Mara Webster? Yes. Nick Poirier? Yes. Val Porras? Yes. Roger Jarrett? Yes. And Sheila Kelly. That's everyone. Yes. Right. Motion passes unanimously. So, Don, uh, start your start the engine. All right. Uh, next topic. So, when we um, bring on a search firm, hopefully that works out well for us. Uh, they are going to want to work with a task force from AMSA. So that's going to be representative of the stakeholder groups that we have mentioned, and it's certainly a step in the uh, right direction for an inclusive, trustworthy process. So. I spoke to um, the Charter School Association, uh, and I've mentioned I've done this a couple times. What you want to do is have uh, a, com a committee with very good availability because there's going to be a numerous, there are numerous meetings to go through um, once, you know, once we've got the search firm up and running, and you imagine they're going to be doing all the work that we just described. Search firms want to work hand in hand with representatives from our school in an organized manner. So a couple of them that I've just briefly spoken to were very clear that they need um, a solid team to work with. Um, so you want to think about availability, you want to think about stakeholders, you want to think about how many members um, and what that looks like. And I'm hoping that we could briefly work through that tonight. Um, the more decisions we make, the, the more we will stay on track and not fall behind. So when I spoke to the Charter School Association, they mentioned um, ideally five to eight members. I mean, I think we could stretch it to nine and be okay. I think 
it would be great if we could briefly discuss as a group what we think we would like to see for representation. Um, I know that Anders has um, certainly volunteered himself to stay and be on the official search committee task force. I think Anders is a, is, would be a great addition. Um, I'm willing to be on it to continue to guide the process, but if, if folks want something else, I, um, I don't bring my ego to the table. I'm, I'm fine with not being on that committee. So I will volunteer Anders <laughs> and I'll volunteer myself. And then I think we could, it would be great if we talked about, do we need another board of trustee member, parents, faculty, um, office representation, things like that. So I will leave it open, um, but if we could maybe think of a group of nine and then more importantly, how do we decide who that nine is if we're picking parents and faculty and things like that. So. I'm, I'm Don, I'll, I'll just say that I'm definitely in, count me in for that. Um, uh, your points are well taken about the size of the committee and who, who should be on the committee and the time commitment. Um, and as you have said, and Raul and Roger have said, I think the representation will be very important. We want a diverse array of voices. Um, so a couple factors to really consider, and Don, I know you, you've mentioned this uh, initially, is that we want to have lower school representation, upper school representation. Um, I think it would also be important to have a teacher from the math and science uh, disciplines and also a teacher from the humanities disciplines as well. Um, another factor to consider is the experience of the teacher, new teachers versus old teachers. Um, and the other two voices that I think are really, really important in this process are our department chairs. Um, our department chairs have been in so many ways the secret sauce of AMSA. Um, our academic success comes from our department chairs and our fantastic teachers. And our department chairs really lead the school academically. Um, they've been given tremendous amount of autonomy. They use that autonomy to um, make our school so successful academically. So I think their voice will be really important. The other voice that I think will be really important too is someone from the counseling department. Uh, we have learned so much over the past few years about the importance of social and emotional learning and how social and emotional learning and mental health is very much connected to academic progress. And our counseling department has done such a tremendous job with that. And having a voice from the counseling department uh, add to that, I think would be absolutely uh, essential. So I, I know too, the last thing I would say is I, I know that there's definitely a, so a concern with the size of the committee and that it could become a little bit unwieldy. And I, I did read that the Charter School Association recommended five to eight. Uh, you know, if I could put, it, put in my two cents, I would err on the larger side to make sure that we do have greater representation of the many voices. And I just pipe in for a second. Um, we're talking about a task force to, um, to, uh, interview and whittle down a, 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 um, a recruiting firm, right? Uh, a, or not, a, uh, to whittle down the, um, the, the company, right? The firm that okay. we're going to choose. It's going to be the one. So the working group that we already have that Sarah. Oh, okay. I, gonna, I got it. I, I was a little confused. Okay. okay. Yeah. This one's for whittling the actual candidates. Yeah, so this, the role of this committee is to work with the executive search firm and help, and then eventually they would present a small pool of executive directors for consideration to the board in, in the end. They would be the ones doing the intermediate screenings and helping the executive search firm make sure they had the right questions being asked and the right people. Um, so I was thinking rather than talking about people, I mean, Anders did a great job there of identifying roles. So if we thought about it more in terms of what roles do we need on the, on the, uh, in the, in the task force. Yeah, and I'm going to throw another role there. Um, is we formed the advisory council to the board uh, with a couple of years ago, if I remember correctly to uh, make sure we stayed in touch with people that have been in the board in the past and that have been, you know, 
uh, good support for the school, and they also have a lot of the history of previous searches. So that that's something I would throw there as an additional um, profile. Somebody from that advisory council to be part of this the, the search committee. Yes, so Roger, I agree. So rather than discussing individuals, if we could sort of take what Anders started, which was a sort of a list and then Raul's comments. So if I've got, you know, between let's say nine and 11 slots, I'm not exactly sure where we're landing on the number. And then we sort of work, walk through that. So lower school parent, upper school parent. Um, and then, you know, I don't wanna, I would love to hear from the folks on the call, you know, what are, what are we thinking between what Anders said and what Raul said to sort of, if we can come up with the slots we wanna fill, then we can talk about how to reach folks to see who's interested. I, I really appreciate Raul's input and thought on that. I'm not 100% sure I, I agree. I, I think Roger is our historical uh, person. Um, Anders was also around for all the different various searches. And I, and I would hesitate to put someone on the committee who was on the last two committees or who was involved in the last two hirings, to be perfectly honest, when we're talking about our staff and the trust of, of that. Um, there's a lot, still a lot of hard feelings back um, from those days and those searches. Yeah, I would just second what Alan said. Uh, you know, the 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 last search for um, Dr. McClary obviously didn't turn out too well, and still some bitter feelings about that. So that's just you know something to be very much aware of. Yeah, that, that's a good point, Alan. And, and I meant more that maybe it wasn't a search when we decided to go with Dr. Lewis with the with the dream team of, of Lewis and Lindsay. So. That was more of what I was thinking since I wasn't involved in the previous searches, but you're right. Um, keep that in mind. Uh, just to, to Don's point, if we, um, so if we picked a lower school teacher, an upper school teacher, a counselor, a department chair, a lower school parent, and an upper school parent, myself and Don, that brings us to eight. Um, and, you know, the, do you cap it there? Do you add another board member to that? Or do you cap it there and say, well, that's a, you know, workable size? I, well, I think we, I would sort of try to back into it and say, make sure that we, we've got the right set of roles. I would even throw the possibility out, given the your mention of humanities and science, that if we could get one department chair I don't know if we're going to go two department chair heavy if we have, do we want two? Well, you're, I can see it. I can see either yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, I've, that's a good you're, question, Roger. I've got lots of experience as a department yeah. chair. I was a department chair for 17 years or so. And then right. we would have another, you know, right. if so we could get, we could get, that, a, we could get, get for the, covering the department chair aspect, we could have you and then have, a, try to recruit a uh, department chair from the science side of the house or math yeah math science <laughs> not non-human non-humanities and I, I would also consider that this would be just a first round of interviews right so we start whittling them down the, the committee whittles them down there'll be another set of interviews where more people of uh, more of you can be involved as well i'm assuming right, right? Yeah, just to be clear interviews is just one part of the process you know, the, right the committee has to work with the search firm for guiding them through the whatever they propose will be the sourcing and filtering and then interviewing and then presenting to the full board so yes the full board will get to interview the finalists the differences that the committee will take on committee task force will, will take on everything that happens before we get to that point so it doesn't mean that everybody else on the board will not get to talk to candidates before they get we get to the final one. Yeah, I just didn't want anyone on the board to feel like they were going to be left out of the, the process. So thank you, Rove. No, that. and then same, repeating the comment I made earlier, the rest of the community shouldn't feel that way either because part of that organizational assessment and however way we end up doing it, whether it's the firm or by, by ourselves, will be to collect their input and to make sure they have a say whether or not they're part of the task force. Um. 
So the other thing we can do, um, and I'm not looking to close the discussion, um, is we could say that this is the, you know, the eight roles, let's say. Um, and if we feel that right as we start, there's way too much work or we're not getting it, you know, we realized we left out a stakeholder group. There's nothing to say we can't add to the group. Um, so, I mean, we could go with these eight roles and I can recap them. Um, and then um, I would just want to touch on sort of a couple of concepts after that. But just to recap, I've got myself and Anders, a lower school parent, an upper school parent, a science math department chair, a counselor, a lower school teacher, an upper school teacher, and that's eight. I would like to see um, one more board member. I was just gonna say that also. That's great. Yeah. I volunteer unless somebody else wants to take that spot. I mean, Who else volunteered? Raul. So Raul, that brings us to nine. And Kristen, I didn't know if you were volunteering or just saying we should have another member. I was saying that there should be another member. And if I beat somebody to the mute button, please don't don't uh, don't be shy. Well, I think as a potential next uh, chair, you're a good pick. All right, so we'll go with nine, and then at any time we can certainly consider adding to it. Um, unless I, you know, unless someone has not had a chance to chime in, I, I sort of want to um, sort of leave with my, you know, with a task, and it would be how do we appoint two parents, and how do we reach out to staff? Uh, I mean, obviously reach out to parents. Like maybe I answered my own question, but is it as simple as sort of sending an email to the parent community? describing what we're looking for and funneling the responses to one person um, and then similar question for the staff. I, if I could chime in on that one too, Dawn, I was thinking about this and, you know, I think there's two ways to go. One way to go is um, kind of uh, closed doors. We pick people that we identify people and we say that would be a great person or that would be a great person. The benefit of that is that we know who we, we, we would be getting. We know they would work hard. We know they would be devoted. The downside of that, and I think it's a very big downside, is that that looks like a very closed operation. It doesn't look open, doesn't look transparent. I think it's far better to open the process up, call for recruits, you know, and, and clearly state, here's what we're looking for. We're looking for a lower lower school teacher, an upper school teacher. We're looking for someone with um, math and science, some of humanities. And this is a big time commitment um, from you. And then, you know, hopefully, ideally, we would get a, a, a good list of candidates. And then perhaps as a small committee, we could work through that list ourselves. But I would definitely urge that the process itself reflects what we want and that it's open and transparent and everybody who's interested would, would have an opportunity. I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but I'm, I'm going to throw it out there. So each of these groups has organizations within the school that represents them. Would it make sense to and, and the board cannot dictate this, but it's just a, an idea of having like PTO to the side or you know, figure out who would be a good um, parent candidate. Or, or, right. no, I, I don't think so. I think you want to open it up to, um, to any parent. I mean, we, we have a community council that we work very closely with. There's 24 members. If we want to dig into you know, folks who are interested in policy and academics and things like that, I would do that more than going towards the PTO. And, and beyond that, open it up and, and see, who, see who pops to the surface. But I do think that, you know, we need to be cautious there as well. Right, and maybe PTO is their own choice, but it, any group that represents parents or a group that represents teacher, you know, that... They can have their own discussion and politics. Well, it is what it is. Well, well, how about this? I, I like the idea that it should be open to anyone to self-nominate that they are interested in the, the serving on the task force, and that we empower the uh, task force leads, which would be 
well, which would be Don, Raul, and Anders to make the selections for the slots. Yeah, I, I, I just to reiterate what we said, I, 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 it, having that committee is going to be so important. And the last thing we, and I know this is the last thing all of you want, the last thing that we want is to have it look like it's been stacked in one direction or another. Um, in addition to all the other things that we said, we also want to try to make sure that there are different voices uh, on that committee when it comes to things such as whole child or academic learning, because there is that too in our school. Um, and, you know, if we stack a committee with people who are firmly, uh, you know, the academic route or firmly on the social and emotional route, um, that wouldn't look good. So we have to have that ideological balance as well, too. It's quite complicated. <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a question or a suggestion. Remember, yes, thanks. So um, you want people who are committed, I think, putting out the amount of time commitment that's going to be required uh, without exception will help to drive the right people. But what if you also asked everyone to write a brief paragraph of why they wanted to be part of the team and then you can have a small committee go through that and make sure that that you had the right balance based on what those contributions were it's a good idea i was thinking little 15 minute zoom interviews potentially depending upon how many you have as well yeah make it, makes it i was trying to warn myself like who makes a decision but we already have some named members to that task force so. oh. <laughs> i was suggesting that the that that my suggestion was that um, Don, Raul, and Anders would be the ones empowered to make the committee member decisions. Well, and I think that I, I think I'd be okay with that um, because of what Kristen added. I think that that's a really great point. Kristen. Yeah. Um, so thank you for adding that. That's 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 key. We definitely want to be able to use some. Metrics might be not might not be the right word, but we want to have to Anders' point to have a really good cross section of stakeholders within the stakeholders, so to speak. So, um, so I, you know, I'll I'll wait for the board of trustees to weigh in. Um, but and Raúl and Anders, do you do you feel comfortable if if we get the um, the interested parties with a paragraph uh, fully explaining the time commitment? Um, and I'm thinking the way to outreach to parents is similar to how Bella sent the email um, looking for folks who are interested in being on committees. This is, just, I think that, I think that's a great yeah. way to our parents. I love Kristen's idea of having, you know, just write something. You know, if you're really interested in this, you can certainly take the time to write a, you know, a short statement about why you're, why you want to serve on this. Um, I also think it, it you know, it depends on the number of people who would apply to this, but, you know, the idea, as Ellen said, of a 15-minute interview certainly wouldn't be bad. Um, you know, in our, I, I think, I don't want to speak for Ellen, but I think in our experiences um, with some members of the community council, sometimes you have folks who are not as engaged, not as motivated, and uh, it's hard to tell just on paper. So, you know, having the process of a 15 minute interview could certainly help uh, because, you know, as you said, Don, we're going to need people who are motivated, who really care about AMSA and who are ready to work hard because this will be a lot of hard work and it'll be tough too. it. You know, you'll have to be able to balance different people's opinions. You'll have to be able to listen to people respectfully. Um, it, it, it won't be easy either. So. I think key is the t putting the time commitment up front because, you know, people can, people want to be participate, but when, you know, when push comes to shove, the time, if the time commitment's not there, then the, the committee falls apart. And so I think really being realistic about the, And if you're in the interviewing process to say, say that up front, you know, number one expectation is you know the time commitment um so and also a nice side effect of it is by people submitting a, a letter 
they will will have a back bench of people. You know, something may happen during the summer. You know, things things will change. So you know, if, even if you weren't accepted in the initial grouping, um, you know, we'll have we'll have additional candidates to pull in should Murphy's Law intervene. May I may I ask a question, Don? Just just for the record here, I just want to make sure you have nine roles you're talking about here. I have Don Anders, upper school teacher, a lower school teacher, an upper school parent, a lower school parent, Raul, a counselor, and someone. I have math, but I don't have what that math person is. That would be a science slash math department chair. Okay. Didn't, didn't others offer the humanities side as well? Did we not have that on the list specifically? Under, uh, Anders, yeah, I, I, Anders covers that role. Okay. He's been the uh, history department chair for 15 years? 17? 17. <laughs> and now we have a, another fantastic, uh, absolutely awesome department chair, Brianna Murphy. So She's going to lead the history department for 20 years. Yeah. Break your record there. Awesome. Further discussion? Or? Yeah, but we need to move forward unless anyone has anything else. Um, so there's, so as far as we've defined the roles, we've empowered uh, Don, Raul, and Anders to select additional members of the task force. Uh, there's no vote in the, in the creation of the task force, so we have established it. And you can always come back to the board, you know, if you need more members or you find something's not working. You know, I definitely, as part of this mission for this task force, I empower you, if needed, to um, if, if worst case, if you needed, you can kick people off the task force and uh, get a different person. You know, if something's not working out, or if you, if we want if you want to add more people, I, I guess that would come back to the board to. If you see additional roles that would be needed, that would be for the board to decide that. Sounds great. All right. Uh, I don't want to. I'm sorry. It just occurred to me too. I don't want to make this go any longer. Did Did we earlier say we wanted to consider students to participate in this exercise, or no? That was not discussed so far. Okay. I do think that if the if you if the company comes in and they're able to put together some focus groups, I, I agree, Kristen. I think a focus group of students is is a good idea. Yeah. So participation, yes. Being part of the subcommittee, I, I don't think so. The task force, no. Yeah. I think it would make sense to figure out a role for them, um, but. Obviously, it has to be a very specific role, and you want to choose the right people. I think the executive search firm can guide us in that in that area. But I, I agree with Raul that not not part of the not part of the um, the task force. But we definitely want to, as as Anders and others have said, we want to continue to seek input from all of our stakeholders. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And I think, you know, having forums, as Ellen mentioned, and, and meetings with students, all the top candidates, I think that would be very, very important. And to have the uh, students add their voice to that, too. All right. Any further discussion or questions? All right. We, we have a decision. We have created the uh, next task force. And at this point, if there's nothing else, I believe I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. I can't see who's saying that. That was Bella, Bella and, and Liz. Liz. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Sarah, please call the roll. Okay. All right. Uh, Bella Gorman. Yes. Ben Hamill. Yes. Don Capello. 
Yes. Jill Schaefer. Yes. Kristen Carney. Yes. Liz Saul. Yes. Maura Webster. Yes. Nick Porian. Yes. Raul Porras. Yes. Roger Jarrett. Yes. Sheila Kelly. <coughs> Sheila. Yes. Okay. That's everyone. All right. Motion passes. Meeting is adjourned. Um, there is a standard board meeting on May 26th where we will be publishing the agenda and uh, doing having our regular board meeting then. So this is in a special board meeting, does not replace our existing board meeting that is scheduled for May 26th.